opposing stages of the Vietnam War were marked by high drama and desperation. This is the story of a remarkable mission that took place in March 1975, during the end days of the Vietnam War. A war between the country's communist north and the US-backed south that lasted almost 20 years. The mission objective was strange yet highly important. Their job was to remove fuel from a nuclear reactor before North Vietnamese forces could get to it. It was a race against time and the price of failure would be nuclear devastation. Background The Vietnam War, lasting from 1955 to 1975, was a complex and protracted conflict primarily between North Vietnam, supported by the Communist bloc, and South Vietnam, backed by anti-communist forces, including the United States. Rooted in the post-World War II division of Vietnam, it became a symbol of the broader Cold War struggle. The conflict involved intense guerrilla warfare, with the North Vietnamese forces, led by Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Cong, employing guerrilla tactics against the better equipped US and South Vietnamese forces. The US became deeply involved in the mid-1960s, escalating its military presence to halt the spread of communism. The war witnessed significant anti-war protests globally. The Tet Offensive in 1968 marked a turning point, revealing the complexity of the conflict. Despite overwhelming military might, the US struggled to achieve its objectives. The war ended in 1975 with the fall of Saigon and the reunification of Vietnam under communist rule. The Vietnam War left a profound impact, shaping foreign policy, igniting anti-war movements and prompting a re-evaluation of military interventions. Talat's Nuclear Reactor In order to get the full picture, it is necessary to start a little bit further back. In 1963, the US gifted South Vietnam a nuclear research reactor situated in Dalat, around 200 miles northeast of Saigon, now Ho Chi Minh City. In 1975, as the South Vietnam government began to fall, and as fighting approached the nuclear reactor, Washington became seriously alarmed. The reactor's technology was far more advanced in anything the Soviet Union had. The US decided to act, and to act quickly. They were desperate to remove the nuclear fuel rods before they fell into enemy hands. Survivor of the operation, Waldemar Hendrickson recalls. If we had not gotten the fuel out, the reactor would have been a prize of war. But the government, boy, the government really put itself out to make this successful. Rescue Operation on March the 24th, then Secretary of State Henry Kissinger sent a secret telegram to the US Embassy in Saigon. He ordered the fuel to be removed. He feared the technology would fall into North Vietnamese hands. Executing the order, however, was anything but simple. Just weeks before the fall of Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam, two American C-130 Hercules planes flew to the Central Highlands. Territory was falling as the North's army marched south. The troops were advancing fast, and the crew was in a race against time. On one of those planes was Wally Hendrickson. At the time, he was a 39-year-old scientist. However, he was an ordinary man in an extraordinary situation. So a big job and a highly dangerous mission, but who was tasked with it? Wally and his colleague, John Horan, were working for the Energy Research and Development Administration in Richland, Washington, when they received a request. It was from the Atomic Energy Commission, or the AEC. Wally remembers. We too were the only volunteers out of 20,000 employees. So <laughs> it wasn't generally attractive to the AEC people. And I think they had a, a much better developed sense of self-protection than I did. Wally was concerned by the options presented to him on how to disable the reactor. The dangers were enormous. In the case that the fuel could not be taken out, 
the fuel was to be made inaccessible to the North Vietnamese, and there were two options, to fill the reactor with concrete, which would be hard to do, going on impossible, and if that couldn't be done, the core was to be dynamited. While he was against the war, yet he felt compelled to risk his life for the mission. I volunteered to do a job important to the government. It needed something done, and I was willing to do it. That was my mindset. He recounts. We flew from the sea into Dalat. It's in the mountains. When we got there, the clouds were covering the ground. And I could see a few mountains above the clouds. We didn't know where the other mountains were. We couldn't see them. So we went round and round, waiting to find a, a hole that we could go down through the cloud layer. And the pilot saw a hole, and he dived through it, and he, he made a, a quick left turn, and there was the runway, and we plopped down on the runway. Wally and his team only had until the transport plane returned the next day to remove the fuel rods and get them back to the USA. It was fraught with risk. To limit exposure, they worked in a rotation of four-person shifts. While one member hoisted the fuel rods, others would hide behind a protective wall, shielding themselves from radiation. The fuel was in the form of little rods, a little larger than one inch in diameter, each weighing about 17 pounds and measuring about four feet long. They used their hands to save time because the normal and safe procedure that used robots and cranes would have taken too long. From the top of the reactor, they lowered a hook into the core and used it to lift the fuel rods one by one. We did a lot of sweating. That was a lot of work. And we worked without any sleep, not much to eat or drink. It was very hard physically. While his team continued to work late into the night, it's unknown how much radiation exposure they received. Finally, at 2 a.m. on the 31st of March, the team finished the job. When they took off from Delart Airport, the plane was overloaded and shouldn't have taken off at that load. With Wally recalling, We didn't so much take to the air as we ran out of airport. We went down in elevation when we, <laughs> when we got off the end and houses were outside of the wings of the airplane. Under darkness, they were flown back to Saigon. Almost immediately, they learned that Delart had fallen. From Saigon, a transport plane loaded with the recovered nuclear fuel left for the US, just as scheduled. Legacy. The last minute efforts of US scientists had averted the unimaginable option of dynamiting the reactor. When I found out uh, one of the options was dynamiting the core, I was pretty upset. You don't disrupt a reactor core with dynamite in a settled community like that. This would have in fact been a war crime had it been chosen as a preferred option by the United States. Vietnamese authorities later rebuilt the reactor at Delart, using technology and nuclear fuel from the Soviet Union. Fifty years after the war, the facility still stands. It remains the only functioning research reactor in Vietnam. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. And for more amazing tales and thrilling stories, don't forget to subscribe to Uncovered Secrets. Also, hit the bell icon to stay notified for every release.